Hey y'all, what up? Welcome back to Holden Bros. We're up here on Saturday morning. Just had Santa Claus, aka UPS, show up. Dropped off a bunch of boxes and some goodies for Stevens Bel Air. Get ready for part two. Here we go. So the first piece that, that you're looking at here is this billet adapter piece. And this came from Suncoast. They're out in California. Uh, a lot of guys, if you do any performance stuff, you, you surely have heard of Suncoast. And they make this adapter plate and uh, for to, to do a conversion, to use a Chrysler transmission, four-speed lockup transmission behind a Duramax, a configuration that was never put together. And it's called a Duraflight. Uh, you know, kind of play on the words Duramax and Torque Flight. So this Duraflight adapter allows you to run a Dodge converter uh, with a conversion flywheel, right, Stephen? Um, and uh, allows you to run a four-speed lockup transmission behind a Duramax. This is a much smaller transmission case than an Allison. They shift much faster. Uh, these are just a whole lot easier to mess with and you can run a full manual valve body make it crayon simple or you can run electronics and make it shift on its own with multiple different patterns and stuff like that so it's a great choice for high performance application uh, got an overdrive gear so you can cruise down the highway and will take a a lot of abuse um, you'll also notice on the back side of this that it's got a brand new four-wheel drive extension housing some of you guys may be wondering why a four-wheel drive housing in a two-wheel drive car well, the reasoning is there's two reasons. The four-wheel drive housing allows you to run a shorter total length output shaft. Uh, this is actually the HD housing that comes from TCS of Canada, maybe cast by somebody else, but nonetheless, we buy a lot of parts from TCS Canada. They sell wicked awesome 48RE parts. They, uh, they have the airmet shafts, your miraging intermediate shafts. They sell stuff for all kinds of automatic transmissions. If you've never heard of them, you need to check those guys out and make them part of your next transmission build if they have anything that you need because all their stuff is absolutely top of the line. Uh, but to answer this question anyway, uh, for those who have it, why a four-wheel drive housing and a two-wheel drive car? We are going to run what's called a stubby or a shorty shaft out of the back side of this. It's actually gonna get a billet aluminum piece that is also made by Suncoast. It goes on the back side, has a cool little taper to it, and you actually put a yoke, a billet yoke on the back side of this, and you end up with a 29 spline, big, fat output shaft, and a short, stubby transmission assembly. So you have less leverage on driveline components that are out here, harmonic, you know, vibration, distortion, things like that. It's all just better in a shortened package, and it also lets you get a little bit more drive shaft in a car that's relatively short. We are going to show you a rendering that we had done on this car. Uh, mainly because we had a lot of ideas, even some of you guys reached out to us with some ideas about what we were going to do with the car and we've changed the direction of this a little bit and I think y'all are really, really going to dig what this thing is going to look like. Check this out, guys. So, this is what it looks like. We got with the uh, dude over at Alternate Intent on Instagram to come up with this just sick ass rendering. Um, and he just blew us away, man. It, it's amazing to, to see your ideas come together uh, and actually get a visual, you know, down to the fine details, the 20 by 12 and a half wheels, 345s all the way around, the spoiler on the trunk lid, uh, the front splitter. You know, it's, it's really hard to, uh, um, see all this kind of stuff in your head and maintain the vision of what you want to do with the car and I think this guy absolutely knocked it out of the park so now we've got something to keep us inspired and to dream about until we finish this car up but we think this is absolutely sick and this is the direction we're heading with the car hope y'all like it so what we've got right here is the final math on what it's gonna take for this tire to clear and we've done a couple of things to get there between using this wheel offset uh, backspace tool, which we have, we've set out. And I think we ended up with a pretty big wheel actually, right, Steven? Yeah, uh, 20 by 12 and a half with a negative 88 offset. So for those of y'all who don't know, that is, that is massive. That is very, very large. This is a 345. Yep. So 345, 30, ZR20. Tires are rated for probably about 180, 190 miles an hour. Yeah, I think that 187 is the deal. They're Michelin uh, Pilot 4S's or something like that. Yeah, Pilot, Pilot Sport, Sport 4S. 
Very nice tire. Typically, that's uh, on the back of what, a ZR1 vet? Yeah, a lot of Hellcat guys are running them. I mean, they're on Vipers and a lot of and Lamborghinis. And, a lot of tire. Yeah. All right, we're cutting it. Close. Yeah, it was. We got a good reveal around the tire. There's so much tire on this car. I think it looks amazing. So right here, the, the whole point of the rendering is to be able to tell that, okay, we want the wheels to stick out so far and what is the right fender flare? Uh, you know, how does it tie into the fender and all the body lines and look right? And so I'll imagine this with a fender flare about yay big where that body line kind of rolls out and this comes back and ties back into the car. Don't know exactly where yet, but somewhere in this portion. That's what the rendering's for. Uh, Give you yeah. a little bit of an idea so of, can, yeah. Yeah, see what, we, see what we're gonna have. Before you start cutting on something, you know, especially a car like this, this car's got a lot of lines, there's a lot going on. This thing could have a million different attitudes or ways that this car could be made. So, too cool to be able to see it in the rendering and now here to cut it and see it come to life, man, it's just awesome. I love the way that that looks. Yeah, this, it's like a stock car. Dude, it's beautiful. The whole quarter, back corner of this car, it's awesome. That's the kind of stuff right there, guys, that makes you just want to keep building stuff. Here, who makes this tool, Steven? Oh, uh, wheel fit or wheel offset. This is an excellent tool, guys. If you don't have one of these, it's it's five and six lug, all different patterns, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. They accommodate everything. Um, and I think it goes up to 16 inch rim width um and it's from like a 14 inch wheel to a 24 inch wheel so basically one tool does it all and it really lets you see um where your wheel is going to sit uh, on the front it's going to be super beneficial when you're able to turn the wheels left and right and see that your tire is going to clear or what needs removed so what steven's telling y'all is that you can actually simulate the wheel that maybe you find one online and you really like the wheel. Well, you, if you have this tool and you know what size tire you're gonna run, you gotta have a few of the variables figured out. You can jig this thing up and mock up what the wheel is going to at least set the tire, you know, uh, where it's gonna index that tire in the wheel well, well before you buy a wheel. Because let's face it, any of the cool wheels that you buy, especially if you pay for something custom, you're not gonna get your money refunded back to you. You, you need to know what you're talking about whenever you pull the trigger to do that. And they don't make wheels that big that are cheap, guys. So had to make, had to get the tool, had to make this happen. Yeah, absolutely. I think the tool is 350 bucks and a wheel, I don't know, the wheels are probably a G or more. So you spend 350 bucks and you don't ruin a thousand dollar plus wheel. And you get to see what it's going to look like, you know, where your tire is going to be. And then just, you know, insert wheel design here. Exactly. And that's what, that's what you got. So. The next thing that we're going to do, we're, like we said, we were waiting on some engine part stuff. We're going to do the engine build. I think the very next thing that we're going to do is the floor pans, right, Steven? Yeah, and kind of get the motor now that we have the right transmission uh, dimensions and dimensions. stuff. Yeah, because the floor pan for the transmission roughly is going to have to be cut out to here. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. the back of the trans. Um, and then, I mean, the frame is, because the car's so slammed, the frame's into the floor pan, so we don't really have a choice. And it's got rust and rot and stuff, so we want to make what we all want. Up. Yeah, and make something stouter than what came factory and make it to fit our application which is what we're doing. We're, we're building this car to fit the things that we want this car to have. Yeah, and being that it's a thousand horse and gonna be held on the mat 95% of the time, when we build the floor pan, we're gonna, we're gonna build a dry shaft loops in the floor pan. That way if the dry shaft grenades, we don't whip the legs off of my children or Willie or anyone yeah. else that's in it the back It would probably seat. be me, yeah, exactly. 
So he's talking about this tunnel piece right here having the hoops built in to the inside and then we'll sheet over the top of it giving you kind of like a roll cage armor if you will because you're gonna have drive shafts at really really high speed or a drive shaft rather at really high speed here and if it like he's saying if it comes apart you twist and pretzel that thing because you leave on a giant 345 at 30 pounds of boost and it actually hooks that shaft may come apart and the last thing you want to do is be in, inside that thing when it comes in there to visit you <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video here today y'all stay tuned we got a whole lot more cool stuff coming up we got cool videos dropping y'all like subscribe tell us what y'all think in the comments whether you like what we're doing or if you don't doesn't matter y'all talk to us let us know what's up we're also still trying to come up with a name for this car so comment you know what what do you think we should name it now that you kind of you're gonna get to see the rendering and see what we're after help me help us come up with a name all right guys till next time peace later